Hello, my name is Josh, and I'm Watchaholic. Welcome to Horology Insanity. What is up, my watch friends? So, check this out. If you know what this logo is, you know that we're looking at a Laurier today. And I'll bring the watch up in a second, but I want to talk about standard packaging, or at least from what I can tell, this is the second Laurier that I've got to experience. And so you'll see here, branding on the box. It comes with this little watch roll. Now, this is an insert that we put in there. And when I say we, I mean the folks that I do four watches with and that we share watches back and forth with. You'll see that we have little pieces of bubble wrap all over the place. Here, I've got another one over here. This one just came out of another one. So what we do is we, you know, we'll wrap the watch head in a piece of like cellophane type plastic to protect it and then put bubble wrap around it before we shove it into one of these pockets. And so if you ever see me open up a box, you see some random tape and you didn't get that. It's probably because that's just us trying to be extra careful with these watches because we're shipping them around and who knows what the shipping system does with these things some of these times. So you'll notice here, instruction card or something. Does anybody read those? I don't read them. So yeah, so there's that. Um, this watch roll, I'll talk about this a little bit. If you were to like put some leather treatment cleaner and conditioner on it and maybe softened it up and then maybe actually used it like stuck in your pocket like you did a wallet and wear it for a little while it might soften up and be okay but i'm gonna be honest with you this thing isn't great so um it's nice in the fact that it's small and compact it's got two slots but the watch rolls that i've gotten with zelos and halios are way higher quality than what you're gonna see out of this Laurier. So you'll know the watch will come in this slot. I've got it sitting off to the side. And then you've got a screwdriver, like a mill, one mil screwdriver, which actually works really well. And because they're bracelets or screw pins. And then you've got your warranty card and it's got a nice handwritten thing on the back from the owners. The little bit I know about them, they're good people. They're good watch enthusiasts. Now, here's what we're really looking at. Ta-da, the Laurier Gemini. Now this is a vintage style hand wine chronograph. This is a tour watch, so this is my buddy's watch. And when I say a tour watch in this sense, it's not from Laurier or even from another channel or anything like that. My buddy actually bought this watch and was kind enough to loan it out to several of us in our watch group so that we could experience it. And for those of us who have YouTube channels, you know, we get to film it while we have it, while we experience it. So if you're curious what I've got on my wrist, let me zoom out a little bit. I am wearing the Oris 65 Deauville because what's funny is, is this Laurier kind of reminded me of this vintage style Oris 65. And so I think they're completely different calibers of watches. The movements are different. They're different sizes. Um, so I don't think that they compete necessarily. I think you can have both of these in a collection. Um, and I think that my buddy is going to be selling this one after he tours it. And if I'm, usually what we do is we do a raffle. If I'm selected to buy this one, I probably would add it to my collection. I like it. So let's just talk about it a little bit. It's the Laurier Gemini. This is the white variant. Is this the Panda or the Reverse Panda? I can never remember which is which, but white dial, black subdials. And the hands, let me get them in the light. They look black at certain angles, but they're not. They're stainless. The subdial hands are painted white, and you can notice that the subdials are also painted on with like white indices and numerals. But then the dial has what appears to be like applied indices. This one is, in my opinion, the best of the three variants. So they have a black, a white, and a blue. The blue has white subdials. The black, I think, also has white subdials. I think they look all right. And depending on your personal preferences and whatnot, choose whichever one stands out to you. But if the white one is the most popular, I could see why. Let's look at this. It does have the Seagull ST19 hand wine chronograph movement. Now, I have 
other watches with this movement in it. Some people are going to complain on it. Some people will talk about, uh, you know, repair costs or something like that. I've not had an issue with these. Maybe it's because I've got so many watches that I haven't really put one to its test, you know, to really wear it out. But I love a hand wine and the accuracy and everything that I'm getting from these, I usually get better accuracy from my hand wine watches than I do from any of my autos. And so I don't know if that is an actual factor. I don't know if hand wine movements are in general more accurate. If you're a watch nerd and you know that for sure, like if somebody's tested it, I would love to hear about that down in the comments. But yeah, so I like a hand wine movement. And uh, so I'm all about this. Now I will say, let's get right into the pros and cons, right? The con, the movement is beautiful. So why they chose to put an all flat, no etch, no whatever, stainless steel screw down case back on this for a watch that's only got 50 meter water resistance. Let's be real. If this had 100 or 200 meter water resistance, then I can see why they made the choice for that. The ST19 movements that I've seen in my other watches have big display case backs. They look good. And so I'm a little disappointed with that case back, but that's just me. And it's the same beef I have with many watches or sometimes when they put too tiny of a case back on it. Uh, I love Zelos, right? But the new Nova has that little tiny see-through case back on it. And yeah, that's a con. They really could have done better than that. Anyway, here we are. I already mentioned it, 50 meters of water resistance. So you're going to be fine for most use, but like, I wouldn't go maybe do like water sports with this. Um, it might be okay. You definitely don't want to use the pushers underwater. That'll get you hosed real quick. So just be careful with this one. 24 click bi-directional bezel. So this is, you know, like a GMT style timing bezel. And you can see I can click it both left and right. I will say that the outer edge, you can see that it has like a coin edge bezel. Let me zoom in a little bit on that. So the coin edge looks like it'd be a lot more grippy than it really is. I will say it looks great though. I love a coin edge bezel. And so from that perspective, it's nice, but you gotta, you gotta really like put some pressure down to be able to get the traction to move it. Now, you know, it settles in place. There's no back play one or another. It snaps hard into the right spots and it lines up perfectly and you're not going to have that stuff like that seiko is becoming almost notorious for which is misaligned whatever bezel chapter ring rehot you won't have any of that it does have a really beautiful domed crystal now the problem with it in my opinion is it's domed plexiglass so let's see if i have others here here i got a cw right here right domed sapphire as in my opinion it should be i've used the helios in many other videos domed and, and maybe a box sapphire zelos using domed box sapphire let's look at my oris here let's not forget it um i'm almost positive that that's sapphire on this horse yeah some people will say oh well to get the real vintage aesthetic and appeal you want to use not sapphire I know that people with the Speedmasters say that, that what is, I don't even know. I'm not a Speedmaster expert. I don't, I don't see what's so fantastic about them, but people say that, oh, the Sapphire is okay, but it's not really where it's at, that the acrylic dials or the acrylic crystals are the ones to get. I think that's maybe one of those things where you do you. I think that this non-Sapphire is all fun and games till you scratch it. <laughs> and then what are you going to do? So if you're super careful with your watches, it may not matter. Um, let's see if we can get a loom shot. It does have BGW9 loom, which I believe is going to blow blue. And it does. But you can see that it doesn't have a lot of it. So I'm filming in the day. I've got the shades drawn. But you can see the loom pip at the 12. You can see dots on the indices. And I like that the dots are all the way pushed out to the end. The hands are the brightest. And so I think you're going to not have any problems telling the time on this, but it definitely isn't made for its loom. But like I said, we can look at the, the Oris even then. It's kind of eh. I kind of wish the Oris had blue loom while I'm sitting here looking at it comparing it. But case dimensions, we're looking at a 39 millimeter case, um, 20 mil straps. And it says that the bracelet will fit up to eight inches. And y'all know that I pretty much have an eight inch wrist and, um, and it does fit me. So let me just put it on wrist real quick. There it is on my wrist. You can see it wears great. So for 39 mil, 
right? It really does wear. I find, you know, I'm cool with like 38 to 44, probably 45, maybe. Um, my sweet spot is 40 to 42. So that's where I'm at personally. I did take one link out. And so the way that it works for me, my wrists in the morning are swollen and as big as they get. And then as the day goes on, they get better. So I'm right at eight inches in the morning and then it gets down to about seven and three quarter by the end of the night. The bracelet though is really comfortable. It's got a decent taper down to it. You can see that there. It has your normal kind of milled class. There are a couple sharp edges. So, so when you run your finger over that right there, be careful, it'll cut you. It'll cut you. Um, some of the interior parts, no, those don't feel too bad over here. Sometimes this interior part here, one of the Christopher Wards I just got, it'll straight cut you. Be mindful of that. But it's got the normal two button push down clasp with the L'Oreal marking there, the arrows. And you can see this one is getting some wear by the people. Um, I don't know who's all on this tour. I believe I'm down in the list though. So this watch has been around to quite a few folks. I did mention that there's screw pins. So there's the one side, there's the screw side, but they give you a screwdriver that fits it. So you don't have to worry about that. I will say, be mindful. You know, if you change this yourself, be real careful about taking your screws in and out, unless this kind of thing doesn't bother you. But my OCD, that right there would drive me nuts. Like I'd have to repolish that or, or brush it out with a scotch Bright pad or something. Um, you know, these are where the things have been. You can see where these two have been removed and the screwdrivers are just tearing it up. You can see up here, the ones that haven't really been removed don't have that as much. So, and I'm guessing it's gonna be the same on this side too. Let me go here. And you got to catch it kind of in the light. Yeah, look at that there. That's been tore up. And look at that one there. So I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Maybe that's just my OCD. But I do think that it's a lesson learned for everybody to just be real careful how when you do that. And to my knowledge, they don't make a non-marring screwdriver head. So if you or somebody who knows that they do make a non-marring screwdriver head, then please put it down in the comments because I would love to get some of those. I think even the fancy Bergeon and whatever, they'll still scratch up the side of a bracelet like that, depending on the finish. So here, one of the cool things about Laurier, they talk about it's a fully articulating bracelet right so these rock that and i will say it makes them comfortable the finishing on the bracelet is pretty nice it's a very basic finish so you see it doesn't have like chamfer edges or anything like that or chamfer 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 yeah i don't know how to pronounce stuff as y'all probably will know now but yeah you see that it's real simple but i will say that when you're wearing it it's just smooth and comfortable so i can appreciate that um it doesn't have quite the taper that this horse does. I mean, this horse comes down to like a 13.7 right down here. And so it doesn't quite have the same articulation or the the, the taper that the Oris does, which I think makes the Oris wear really, really well. And so, but it does have a, a fair bit of taper. You can see it there. And that helps. Now, last, I'm just going to throw up on the screen. Ta-da! This is the Laurier Falcon. I love, 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 love this gold white Laurier Falcon. Now this is the larger version. I think they came out with a new one. The V2 is the new smaller one, it's like 36. This one's 39, so you can see it's very similar in case shape here. It's of course got the fixed bezel, similar hand set, um, but this one of course is gold. It's got the same type of bracelet, same type of pusher clasp. So we can push in on that, yeah. You can see how OCD I am with my watch is right. There's not a nick or a scratch on mine, but that's just because I am weird. Nevertheless, I'm a big fan of Laurier, and the more that I get to experience them, the more I appreciate them. Now, I will say from a value perspective, I don't think they're the best value. I think they're a decent value. I think they're a decent price for what you're getting. I think the quality is pretty top notch. However, like let's look at this Gemini, for example. It lists at 500. It's a $350 watch. In my opinion, let's be real. I'm frugal. $400. I'll be, I'd go $400. I don't know that it's a $500 watch. The movement, um, yeah, I don't know. The white one, maybe 425, 
but the other ones no i probably only paid i wouldn't even pay 300 dollars for a black or a blue one but that's just me so anyway to each his own do your thing but i just wanted to show you that and a big thanks to my friend bobby legs i will link down to his channel y'all he's got a youtube channel and it's awesome bobby legs is a great guy i love watching his content this is all thanks and courtesy to bobby legs and so if you're not already familiar with him go check out his channel subscribe and just tell him thanks he probably has a video on this watch and you can tell him that uh the crazy josh insanity guy sent you so anyway with that we'll call this one a wraps until we talk again, please remember what really matters. And that's not watches. Keep the insanity sane, my friend. This is sold out. So if you go to their website, you're going to see that it says $4.99 for the MSRP. And it says that they're sold out i don't know if they're doing a wait list or anything like that here's what i think they do unlike zelos and some of the other ones who make a limited batch and then number them and leave them kind of limited in that numbered batch these are not numbered in fact i don't think that there's anything on the case back if you look at this it's just straight up a blank case back but laurier i think what they do is they make them in limited batches but then they produce more. So if you're familiar with Helm, Helm does something similar. Now, Helm might be a hot topic right now because they just did another release. And from what I know, everybody who wants to buy one of those watches can't. And everybody's up in an uproar and people are figuring out, hey, what should I go spend my money on since I can't get a Helm? And I'm going to be honest with you, go buy a Zelos. But I'm a little biased, right? Because I like Zelos. So yeah, go go buy a Zelos, man. Don't and I say this as somebody who's got a helm, right? The helms aren't worth the hype. Just my opinion. So when I go to sell mine, maybe that'll hurt me in the resale, but I don't think so because some people are just fiending after those watches. But anyway, this ain't a helm video, right? This is a Laurier video. And uh yeah, if not a Zelos, I'd buy one of these Lauriers. Now, again, this variant's out of stock. But keep an eye on some of those other ones. And, uh, and I may do another video. So I have a secret on how to get Laurier's that are sold out. But I don't know if I'm going to share it with y'all. Because then I may not be able to get the ones I want. Oh, that's an ethical dilemma. I might have to include that on a Philosophical Friday. Throw it down in the comment section. Am I a terrible person for not giving out all of my watch secrets? Hmm. I got to think about that one a little more. Thank you.